actress Anne Hathaway walked out of a Vanity Fair photo shoot yesterday in support of publishing company Condé Nast Union Walkout. A, a source told Variety they hadn't even started taking photos yet. Once Anne was made aware of what was going on, she just got up from hair and makeup and left. Let's look at what was going on at the Condé Nast Union picket line yesterday. NPR correspondent David Folkenflik wrote on X yesterday, LA Times confirms that 115 journalists laid off about 23 percent of the newsroom, which will be at approximately 385 people left. Now note that taken in combination with last year's layoffs, the Los Angeles Times has lost about one-third of its newsroom in less than a year, which goes to show you the just terrible climate for the media right now. Um, yeah, every yeah. day we hear about layoffs, downsizing, et cetera. It's a, it's a bad time to be in the media Yeah, industry. I saw uh, David Sirota of The Lever waited, and he was pointing out that uh, all of the big news channels still rely on the gumshoe reporting of smaller outlets, of individual reporters, individual journalists breaking stories and the like, but they simply aren't being supported and those journalists don't get as much funding as talking heads on mainstream TV with, you know, who could not do their jobs without that reporting. So this does really seem like a short-sighted plan and, and something that is going to increasingly drive people to abandon big media altogether and go try to find individual sources of reporting that share their values and are doing the kind of work that they like, whether it's someone like Jordan Cheriton over at Status Quo, who we have on the show from time to time, people like The Lever. Um, we, so we talk about so many stories that are broken by those smaller outlets who are not at all compensated in the same way that these big news channels who have the resources in many cases but are choosing not to support uh, the staff members. I mean, who have the resources but have a very fraught business model that's not really worked out for them in the era of the Internet. Um, and they, they have not figured out how to make it sustainable and they're, you know, they're losing, so they've had to lose staff, you know, over and over again. I mean, they, they haven't made it work. Local news doesn't, it's just, is not profitable the way it, it, way it used to be when you had, you know, newspaper subscriptions, that kind of thing. So Anne Hathaway got a lot of plaudits online for walking out. Uh, just for background as to what's going on at Condé Nast, uh, the union has filed two unfair labor practices, this is reporting from The Hollywood Reporter, against Condé Nast with the NLRB since the this layoff annou announcement, which happened on November 1st. They claim the union surveilled and intimidated um, union members while trying to gain clarity about the layoffs, and that happened on three different occasions. Uh, and moreover, uh, they said that they've uh, engaged in regressive bargaining, so downsizing a severance offer uh, after employees uh, complained about the proposal, which would cut 94 union jobs, which amounts to 20 percent uh, of the union. They provided a, a less a less uh, advantageous severance package uh, in the course of these negotiations. So I don't know that this is looking to get resolved anytime soon. We obviously saw some footage from the one-day walkout. Uh, we'll update you if any more uh, such actions are planned. But certainly, the fact that this got so much attention because of Anne Hathaway's behavior, I think, does say something significant about the power that people with high uh, profiles celebrities have and actually engaging politically in these ways. She didn't even have to say anything. She simply left her photo shoot and there have been headlines up the wazoo about her choice to do so. I <laughs> I missed all these headlines, but maybe it's getting a lot of attention in entertainment news or something. Or I just Googled uh, it. If you're Variety, an Axios, Anne, on Anne CNN, Hathaway, uh, Washington Post, The Hollywood yeah. Reporter, uh, all of these outlets uh, have covered oh. the story and framing are framing it as Anne Hathaway uh, walks out. How bold and how brave. I just like these media companies are all failing. They don't. Their business models don't work. They have to. They they're. They have too many people. They have too many employees. They can't pay them all. They got to lay people off. I don't like. I don't know what what's there to strike about. The business model is failing. These companies are not profitable. They're way too top heavy, and so they gotta they gotta cut people loose. If they're top heavy, why would you be cutting people at the bottom? I mean, they're bottom heavy. They're heavy in all directions. <laughs> well, they I don't think you need... were right the first time. Condé Nast uh, turned a profit of nearly two billion dollars in 2021, which I think. It's just the last year that I can pull up here, uh, the most recent year. Oh, here we go. Uh, revenue grew at Condé last last year, shy of Target. Revenue of nearly $2 billion. Uh, this is from a February 2023 article in the New York Times. Um, so, you know, the question is, 
how much profit is enough and whether or not if you have a, a policy, which is typically how businesses run under capitalism, of, of expecting infinite um, infinite growth, then at a certain point to achieve that artificial sense of infinite growth, you're going to have to start laying people off, even if the business is itself sustainable. And I think that's the, that's the question at hand here. I mean, yeah, um, I guess so. Um, what else do we have to say about this segment? <laughs> um, Hillary Clinton, you wanted to talk about her? Oh, well, an interesting um, move from the uh, former Secretary of State. She tweeted out in solidarity of what has been described as a snub of the uh, Barbie movie in these Oscar nominations. You might be aware that America Ferreira was nominated for Best Supporting Actress, and I believe there were some other uh, nominations. Uh, Ken, um, Ryan, Gosling. Ryan Gosling was nominated uh, for his role as Ken, but the lead role, Margot Robbie, was not nominated, nor was... Uh, Director uh, Greta yeah, I saw Gerwig. a lot of a lot of complaining about that, including from Hillary Clinton. Um, so what did you make of that? Uh, specifically, uh, I'm going to read the Hillary uh, Clinton tweet. She says, "Greta and Margot, while it can sting to win the bo box office, but not take home the gold. Your millions of fans love you. You're both so much more than enough." I saw Ken Klippenstein hop in the replies saying. Uh, Barbie should have gone to Wisconsin. <laughs> 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 Obviously drawing parallels Look, between Hillary Clinton's kind of licked wound yeah. remarks after she lost her race and, and, and these two women. I liked the movie. I enjoyed it. I don't know that it was like the best movie ever, so I don't, I'm not losing, I'm, I, I don't, and don't I mean, sound like a hater, it was a good movie, but uh, people seemed really upset. I guess it's the optics of like the one person getting nominated. I mean, they get not, got nominated for a bunch of things, just not um, best, right? They got best, she got, Greta Gerwig got best adapted screenplay or something like that, I think. It was just not um, director and not That's an award right. for Margot Robbie. There are all very talented people. It was a good movie. Maybe that. Uh, I, some people saying that's reinforcing the message of the movie that the man in it is the one who who's benefiting from it. But it was, yeah. it was a really good performance frankly, for I Ryan think, Gosling. I think the movie was not that good. But frankly, I think that America Ferrera, who I really like as an actress, I like all of these people. This isn't personal. Um, also, it's bizarre that she was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for that role. I just don't get it. When you look at who these people are up against, so if you look at the Best Actress category, it's Emma Stone in Poor Things, Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon, who just was phenomenal, Annette Bening in Nyad, which I haven't seen, Carrie Mulligan in Maestro, which I didn't love, but she did a good job. She did a very good job. Um, and Sandra Huller in Anatomy of the Fall, which I also didn't see. The idea that Margot Robbie kind of stiffly walking around as Barbie is c compelling as Lily Gladstone's performance, where you watch a three-hour, like, holocaust of her family and community, I I'm sorry, it's just... It's, it's almost embarrassing, I feel like, for Hillary Clinton and others to be putting Margot Robbie in a position where she has to defend her performance against these other really meaningful Oscar-worthy performances. It's Ryan nice, Gosling no said something, too. Yes. Ryan Gosling... Um said that uh, that um, there's no Ken without Barbie, there's no Barbie movie without Greta Gerwig. To say that I'm disappointed they're not nominated would be an understatement, um, and so on. Yeah, and when you look at Best Screenplay, similarly, it's a really, there's a lot of really great pieces in there. I mean, The Holdovers was kind of a sleeper hit. I really enjoyed it. Um, May, December, I, Maybe Barbie can be in there if May December's in there. I know people have mixed feelings about it. That's the Mary Kay Letourneau-esque um, Netflix movie um, about a, oh, a teacher yeah. who uh, has I a, didn't see so many of these movies you just mentioned. Right. And I I've saw heard great, very few of these. I, I saw great, Barbie and Oppenheimer. I heard great things about Past Lives, which is another one of these um, uh, screenplay awards, Anatomy of the Fall, and Maestro. So again, you know, maybe there's a better claim there that Barbie is a better adapted screenplay, like, uh, like a, a original screenplay, rather. Oh, no, it's an adapted screenplay, right? Bar the Barbie, they say it's a, it, yeah. it, it actually did get that category. Yeah, it did. Right, so what no, are we actually did. complaining about uh, here? I don't understand. Best director. Best director. Yeah. Right. Okay. With Scorsese? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Christopher Nolan. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. That's the, that's the complaint. It's, okay. If, the, if you didn't want Ryan Gosling to be the one with the acting accolades coming out of that movie, you should have written Barbie to have a personality instead of trying to protect her as a perfect character. The reason Ryan Gosling characters was good because they allowed him to be flawed. So that is, I think, another reason why she doesn't deserve Best Adapted Screenplay because she wrote she wrote it in a way that precluded Barbie from ever getting any recognition for that role because it wasn't deserved based on what was on the page. Yeah. All right, that's our take on Barbie and labor and whatever else we were talking about. That does it for us for today. Tomorrow on Rising, Brianna and I will be back, and we can't wait. <laughs>
<laughs> be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the go, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Bye-bye.